Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders. We got mail. Hey Santee, can you do one on cattle drives? Trent Green. You all don't know about cattle drives? No, don't worry. I'll steer you in the right direction. Steer. <laughs> okay, here's the basic backstory. Cattle were brought to our country by the Europeans as they colonized the New World. They went forth and multiplied and hung out in western portions of the Americas. We know all this because they kept dairies. <laughs> Cattle became an important source of meat, dairy, tallow, and leather. I smell steak. Some of the first cattle drives went out to the gold fields of California to supply the miners with meat. It took about six months to drive them from Texas to the west coast, but the payoff was worth it. Ranchers would make a hefty profit, go back to Texas, and get ready to do it all over again. Well, they would round them up and be ready to ride in the spring. If ever I would leave you, how could it be in springtime? Knowing how in spring I'm bewitched by you so. By 1866, drives were happening in other directions, following trails like the ones made by Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving. The Chisholm, the Western, and the Shawnee trails pass through water and food sources to keep the cattle fat and sassy. These trails ended up at railheads where they were transported by train to the buyers. Once again, the money to be made was great. Colonel Ike Pryor, one of the great cattlemen of the era, said, Cattlemen who paid $8 a head for the steers in Texas and later sold them at $20 a head in Kansas had a wide margin to work on. In 1866, an estimated 225 to 260,000 head crossed the Red River. To move around 3,000 beeves, a crew of about 10 cowboys, a cook, and a trail boss was needed. The cook drove a chuck wagon that was their portable kitchen and storage for the drive. It was kind of like a U-Haul. Well, and it might be we could persuade you to drive the chuck wagon. Might be, Mr. Dunson. Might be. But it wasn't always smooth sailing. This is Stampede! In your time! The cowboys had many obstacles to deal with, including weather. Not to mention the rogue steer wandering off. Diseases like Texas fever were also a concern with so many herds traveling the same trails. Buyers don't like diseased beef, so yeah, not an easy job for the cowboy. We see a mix of African Americans, Mexican vaqueros, and Native Americans riding the trail with these outfits. We couldn't get the cowboy icon we all know and love without this great melting pot of cultures. The turn of the century saw a waning in the cattle drives. Fences were put up and the cattleman's way of life changed. Expansion of the railroad and its refrigerated rail cars altered it as well. But there are still cowboys and there are still ranches. Their way of life will never be forgotten as long as we have them. Thanks, all you hardworking cattlemen, for keeping the spirit of the Old West alive. Hey Dan, what you doing with that branding iron? Oh, hey Sandy, what are you doing? Yeah. What am I doing with this? Um, you know, I've been keeping an eye out for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a funny guy. Um, you got a lot of really harsh things to say about me. He's a no good miscreant rapscallion. And I'm a sensitive guy, so you should know that's a little bit hurtful. Yeah. Um, I think maybe you owe me an apology. Um, but you know what? We'll just settle up on it. Actually, what I was going to do with this was I was going to beat you senseless with it. What? But I've decided that maybe we'll just brand No, you. no, 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 no. Hey, folks, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on down the trail. Hey, come back here. Wow, something's spooking the cattle.